Good morning, Facebook. We are up early this morning in the Verstray house. Um, lots to do today, so <laughs> we are getting an early start. Um, if you see this live button up in the corner, that means you're watching me live. Go ahead and if you can hear me, do um, give me lots of rapid fire hearts. If you can see me, do hashtag hi mama seven. Um, and while we're at it, take a wild guess of, I don't know, how many times my Facebook will reconnect my phone <laughs> today. Um, if you've never seen my face before, my name is Vicki Verstraight, and I run a mission-based company through Unique. So what that means is every month um, I give a portion of my commission to someone in my community who is struggling or um, facing a hardship. Okay, so um, today I am just going to, I don't know, chat while I do some makeup. So we, I normally use, hang on. This is how prepared I am today. I normally use this primer. This is our normal, like, original primer. On October 1st, we are coming out with a new primer, and this is a um, moisturizing primer, or hydrating, rather. So if you have really dry skin, this is the way to start your makeup routine. After your skincare, start with this. I'll show you the difference, hopefully. I have a figure, excuse the yawning. Um, so... This is the original, <laughs> and it's more, can you see the consistency where it's kind of almost, I don't want to compare it to Vaseline because it's not at all, but it's almost got that tacky consistency, whereas the um, moisturizing is very, I don't know what you would call it, it just like, it's very loose, I guess, and it absorbs into your skin super fast and um, will keep your skin moisturized and hydrated all day long. So that's that, I'll use that today. I don't have dry skin, but um, with winter coming, I do love that moisturizing primer just to give my skin a little bit extra hydration in the winter. So anyway, <sighs> uh, last night was a little bit rough. I don't know what's going on with Henry. <laughs> He's four, maybe that's what's going on. He is, he is a struggle lately. He does this thing where he um, like says he wants something and I'll like go to give it to him or vice versa doesn't want something and then he'll change his mind and he drives me crazy. So like every night before bed, I will, um, I will pray with Henry and, um, and give him a kiss, whatever. Well, Recently, he started saying, no kisses, no kisses. And I'm like, okay. And then as soon as I like take one step away, he's like, no, give me kisses. And it's like, it's a battle for like, I don't know, five minutes of no kisses, give me a kiss, no kiss. So I'm like, you know what? So a lot of times I'll force him to kiss me and then I'll walk away. And um, it's just, it's a constant battle. So last night, he decided he did not want kisses. And I said, well, that's your, that's your choice. Um, I really believe that children should have a say over who touches their body and whatnot. Um, and so if he doesn't want to kiss me, that's fine. Um, and so I put all the kids to bed. The big kids get up super early. So I try to get them started towards bed at 8 p.m. So I come up and it's, I don't know, I say come up because the big kids are in the basement. They sleep in the basement. They have bedrooms in the basement. Anyway. And Henry is up. He's like, I want kisses. I'm like, but you already decided that you did not want kisses. <laughs> so I'm like, all right, come here and give me a kiss and then go back to bed. No, I want them in my bed. I'm like, yeah, well, I don't give in to uh, demands from a four-year-old. So you have a choice. You can come kiss me. Here I was standing in the kitchen. Or you can uh, go to bed without kisses. So he threw a fit. Oh, you're so mean. Whatever. And then goes to bed. Like an hour later, the kid comes up. Or doesn't come up. He sleeps on the main floor. Uh, he wakes up or wasn't sleeping and he's like, it's this battle of kisses again. And I'm like, I will give you a kiss. You just have to come to me. Uh, you already had your chance of in bed. Anyway, so it was just a long night of that. Finally, he went to bed. <laughs> he gave me a kiss, went to bed, whatever. Um, but it seems like it's a constant battle of wills with that kid. And it is driving me insane. Um, especially cause my husband, he, uh, he works, uh, afternoon shift, which actually works out really well. 
I was actually scared for afternoon shift, but it works out well. And um, so I'm alone, you know, battling these kids at bedtime. So it's a little bit, <laughs> it's a little bit of a challenge, but um, we're, we're succeeding. Anyway, so that's about Henry. So last night he was for sale. Okay, you know, I always put like a splurred shadow on my eyes to start. I love this as a base. I do use primer, but I use this too just for extra sticking power. power. And I love that, um, do you see how I have like purple along my eyelids? I love that this is such a neutral color. This is victorious, um, that it covers up any like like veins or purpleness in my eyelids, okay? So you can use your finger. This is a um, cream shadow brush that you can use. And um, yeah, so Lily, if you've been following my story about Lily, I don't know, maybe like, six months, nine months, it's got to be longer than six months ago, maybe nine months ago, she was diagnosed with Cushing's disease. She's got a tumor on her pituitary gland. There's two types. I think it's one's adrenal gland and one's pituitary gland. I think hers is the pituitary gland. And so um, there's really not a whole lot you can do for that. And uh, side effects of that is that she um, sometimes has a hard time holding her bladder and um, she, eat, she wants to eat all the time and she wants to drink all the time, but it's not really that bad and we've got it under control with some medicine and whatnot. So recently we noticed that she has, um, I should back up, when we lived down in Sterling Heights, so probably seven years ago, we had a lump on her side looked at and the vet told us, oh, it's just a fatty tumor, really, you, there's nothing to worry about. I'm like, okay, good. So uh, we noticed that that lump was getting bigger and like we're like, is she losing weight? And that's why the lump is getting bigger. Okay, so I'm just going to use two colors on my eyes today, make it super simple for you. Um, this is one of our new shadows. This is called Earthly and it's kind of a like an earth brown. I'm going to use that in my crease. Um, and then I'm just going to use a kind of lighter color called gentle on my lid. It's super easy. You guys can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Um, the only difference you might change up is where, how high on your brow bones you want to put this makeup. Because I have these deep set eyes and these protruding brow bones, I try to disguise them. And so I put my makeup up a little bit higher. If you don't have that, if you have like eyes where you see your lids really, really well, nothing's hidden on your eyes, go ahead and just stick to like this crease right here, okay? Um, do what you want. There's no right or wrong way to do your makeup. Um, do what makes you feel good about yourself, okay? Um, I tend to <laughs> like my eyes, and so I um, really like to play up my eyes. So that's where I focus all my attention on. I don't do bold lips because I don't like my lips. I feel like they're um, not symmetrical. They drive me crazy. I don't want people looking at my lips, but I do want people looking at my eyes because one thing I like is my green eyes. So focus on what you like about yourself. Anyway, so Lily, so we took her to the vet. We have a vet um, nearby um, that we've been seeing, oh, I don't know, since we moved here, I guess. And um, I can't say I was ever really impressed with them. Uh, they're kind of like, th their bedside manner is not the greatest. Um, they're kind of rough to talk to, but I thought, well, you know, it's really close to home, so I don't have to, um, I don't have to drive my dog far in the car to go to the vet, and their prices were decent, and I just felt like, eh, we'll deal with it. So we got this lump checked out, and the vet told us that it was a mast cell tumor and he said you know it's very common which it is and don't worry about it okay no big deal so i don't remember what happened um i'm trying to remember the sequence of events but so my sister growing up and still now um has a friend who went to vet school she's a really really phenomenal veterinarian um and um my sister always goes to her for advice i'm trying to remember what why i went to her something was happening with lily and i was like you know what i'm gonna call her she lives out of state um and um that's why she's not my vet <laughs> Uh, but she's just really incredible. So she was giving me some advice on what Lily was doing. 
Oh, Lily was crying. She was doing that crying thing. And that's what my vet, our vet was just like, eh, it's no big deal. She's lonely. That's what it was. Anyway, so I wasn't satisfied with the answer. So I said, what do you think about this? So this woman, my sister's friend, who's a vet, she's like, listen, I'm going to be in town. I don't know. It was like a week later. She's like, I'm going to come by and see Lily. She drove, I want to say she probably drove about 45 minutes from where she was staying. Okay, so that's just that earthly brown. I just put it in my crease. And if you notice, I was not really even paying attention. You can't do it wrong, okay? So now I'm going to take, I like sparkle. If you think you're too old for sparkle, uh, do like a matte. Or you can do like a satin finish, like here. Just do a lighter color and just put it on your lid. Anyway, so she drove out to my house. She did a full exam on my dog. And um, it, like she was incredible. And she found that Lily... How awful is this? Years and years and years ago, Lily tore, broke, tore both of her ACLs in her back legs. Um, and we never knew because Lily is very, very stoic and she doesn't show any pain. And um, it, it just really hurt my heart because I was like, oh my gosh, like my dog tore her ACL and she never told me. And we're not that kind of dog people where we ignore our dogs. If our dogs need uh, care we definitely take them in so to think that she was hurting or whatever and we never took her in it just breaks my heart so anyway so do you see how easy that is to do your eyes look at it took me like five seconds i'm gonna blend it just a little bit oh maggie's up anyway long story short she found that lily is um completely blind in one eye almost completely blind in the other which we knew her acl she was in bad shape um and she was looking at this tumor and she's like, well, let me, let me take a sample of it. Look at, I just spread that on my face. Anyway, so she took a sample of it and she said that it indeed was a mast cell tumor. And she said, but she thinks that it has most likely spread to her spleen, her liver, or her lymph nodes. She had very large lymph nodes in her neck. And so, um, we, uh, you know that you don't want to hear that, but Lily is, Lily's got to be 12, almost 13. So, you know, it's like when your dog is getting older, these things happen. But it's still not easy. So, okay, I'm going to put some eyeliner just right in my waterline here. Anyway, so the la so we're just like watching Lily, making sure she's not in pain. Um, I noticed, I think starting Friday, well, Lily started throwing up. And I was like, oh, no, here we go. So, um, <laughs> Maggie is yelling my name. I don't know if you can hear her. <laughs> she's she's in bed anyway so she started throwing up I contacted my sister's friend the vet and she's like I'll just give her Pepsid Pepsid seems to be working for her she's not throwing up when she's on Pepsid um anyway long story short hang on let me do my my water line here whoops Maggie Normally Maggie sleeps till like 8.30. I thought I had a little more time. I love doing it in the waterline. Besides poking myself in the eye, I just feel like it gives my lashes a little bit of a like thicker look without looking like I have thick eyeliner on. It's more of a natural look. Um, anyway, so we're just keeping an eye on Lily right now. She seems to be keeping down food. Um, it's funny though, because Remy and I had a serious conversation about, you know, at what point do we put her down? Um, is she miserable? Whatever. And I swear the morning after we had that conversation, that dog jumped up and was like, I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm, I'm fine. Don't kill me. <laughs> So I don't know. We're just kind of watching her, making sure she keeps down food and that she doesn't get worse. Um, but I, I do believe that she is, is she's got to be nearing the end of her life, which is very sad. She is like the best dog in the world. She was a leader dog reject. Um, and um, so we got her a leader dog, gave her to us back then. They would just give you the dog. <laughs> And she was my buddy ever since. So we got her when I was pregnant with Charlotte. Charlotte's birthday is tomorrow. She will be 11 tomorrow. Charlotte will be, that is. Um, and Lily was like 14 months old when we got her. So 
Yeah, she's like 12 or 13 now. Anyway, so this vet friend would not take any money or anything for all the work she did for my dog. So I don't think she watches my live. So hopefully I can talk about her. I want to send her something. And I've been like debating what to send her um, that shows just how much I care of like how she treated my dog and how she's just, I can just text her and she responds and gives me like dog medical advice over the phone. She's just really an incredible woman and I want to thank her. And so I've been going around, I'm like, do I send her an Amazon gift card? Um, do I, this is the lash primer, by the way. Do I send her like a thank you gift basket? I mean, I would love a basket full of cookies, <laughs> but I just can't. So if you guys have any ideas of like what to send this woman who like seriously gave us like so much information about our dog and has been helping us, let me know if you have any ideas because I just can't think of like an appropriate gift to thank her. I don't want it to be something like, oh, here, here's a gift card, you know, thanks so much. I want it to mean something. Um, so if you have any ideas, that'd be great. Anyway, so Lily, one thing our old vet did not tell us is that like what to watch for as her cancer progresses. Um, so our friend said, you know, we got to watch her breathing because a huge thing is if these, if this tumor has spread to her liver or whatnot, um, she could actually die from internal bleeding. And so that is like a, it's like a torturous death. You don't want that. So, you know, if the minute we see that she's struggling breathing or just not herself we need to sorry that was my alarm to give lily her medicine um we need to make sure we take care of that and that breaks my heart but um i do not want my dog to suffer whatever you send include a heartfelt note taking time to write is always more meaningful you know what you are so right jen yeah jen <laughs> at first i was like wait who's just said that um so I know I just went on for like 20 minutes about my dog, but she's like family to us. She is, well, I don't want to say my first baby because I had Remy first. Um, but she, so we had a German shepherd. Uh, Daphne was our first dog when we got married and she, we got her from a breeder and she actually um, was born with um, missing one kidney and I believe the other one was half a kidney. And so at like, when we went to get her spayed, the vet back then was like, uh, her blood work's not right. And we found this out. So anyway, Daphne only lived 18 months and she was my, like my husband's dog. Like she, German shepherds are usually like one dog or one person dogs. They like, they cling to one person. Anyway, so after Daphne died, I told Remy, I'm like, my next dog, our next dog is going to be my dog. I want her to cuddle me. I want her to come to me. Anyway, so that was Lily. And so Lily has been my she, she's been through everything. Like she has, we call her my dog doula <laughs> because every time I go into labor, she is right there with me and she, um, oh my gosh, she's just the sweet, sweetest dog. She, um, when I'm in labor, I don't want to be touched. And, but Lily, she just, I can lay right next to her and I pet her and she makes me feel good. I swear. So, um, she better stay alive until baby seven gets here so that I can get through that labor. I wouldn't be able to do it without her. Isn't that funny that I'm talking about my dog that way? I just love my dog. But then Estelle, so Estelle is our newish dog. We got her, actually we got her about a year ago. Um, I think on Saturday will be her gotcha day. We were told that she, sorry, Maggie, Maggie's in her crib yelling my name. <laughs> um, we were told that Estelle was a German Shepherd lab mix when we went to get her from the rescue. Um, come to find out she is not a German Shepherd lab mix. She's about 25 pounds of speed. Um, and we think she might be like long haired whippet mixed with, gosh, I don't know what, but anyway, so Estelle is just, she is just taking care of Lily. It is amazing to me what she, like watching her she um i got a lash in my eye last night lily got up in the middle of the night i must not have heard her and estelle jumped on the bed and was like kissing my face to wake me up so that i could let lily out estelle didn't have to go out um if lily's crying estelle comes running to me to get me to take care of lily um 
she just Estelle, it's just amazing how Estelle takes care of her. Oh my gosh, I have an eyelash in my eye and I'm messing up my eye makeup. <laughs> Look at that. I'll fix it in a minute. Um so I'm just it's just amazing to me that that Estelle is I don't know, took that I, I guess that dogs think that way and she thinks she needs to take care of Lily. It's just very sweet. All right, I'm going to put some foundation on them. We'll be done. All right, so I use a stick foundation every day. However, because it's so, it is so fast and so easy and I don't feel like I have to put it all over my face. I just put it where I need it. October 1st, we're coming out with airbrush foundation. I tried it at convention. It is so light. Oh my gosh, I still have something in my eye. It is so light and wonderful. I cannot wait for you to get your hands on the airbrush foundation. So if you want to know more about that, um, gosh, it's only like September 11th today, but um, I'll, I can start taking pre-orders and color match and whatnot for that foundation. And if you want the, um, if you want that more uh, hydrating primer too, I can take pre-orders for that. That way you don't have to stand in line, excuse me, a virtual line um, on the day it launches. You don't have to worry about it selling out. I will get in line as soon as I can and order that for you. So, um, anyway, this, do you see how easy this foundation is to put on? This is the stick foundation and I just put it really where I need it. Um, cause I don't feel like I need it all over the, my face. So I just put it, see how I kind of drew on my forehead and then you just blend it in. This is the Kabuki brush and it is fantastic for any type of face makeup you're putting on. It is worth its weight in gold. Well, it's worth more than its weight in gold. Um, this up so I can get Maggie um so yeah that's did you see how fast I just like blended that in all I did was put on my cheeks my, my cheeks are a little bit red put on a little bit on my forehead and just blend it blend it blend it make sure you don't have any like thicker spots and it stays on all right I'm gonna put what am I gonna do let's put a little bit of blush on and some setting powder and we will call it a day this is our blush. I actually never really use blush. If you watch me, all right, girl, gotta go. Have a great day. Thanks, Jen. Um, I usually use bronzer. Uh, when did I start using blush? I don't know, maybe a month ago. And now I love it. So this is sisterly. Mama, I know. Okay. And, oh, Patriot's Day. That's what I wanted to talk about. I love, like, hearing what people were doing on Patriot's Day or on September 11th, 2001. Um, because I feel like it's really an important part of our history. And so I posted like, what were you doing on September 11th, 2001? Go ahead and tell me your story. We, I was actually in college, so that'll tell you how old I am. We were in, um, like a computer class for education. So they had to teach you how to, I don't even remember what they were teaching, how to use a computer for teaching. <laughs> I don't know. And I remember the girl next to me, it was like the beginning of cell phones and her cell phone kept buzzing and buzzing and buzzing and she got in trouble. So we had um, a break and she went out and she's like, oh my gosh, my, my, my boyfriend works in the World Trade Center and a plane hit. And I was like, what? I, I remember being extremely confused, um, not sure what she was talking about. I was like, is that even really a big deal? Um, you know, I was what, 19, 20, wait, 18 years ago? Yeah, I was like 20. Um, and so I didn't really understand what that meant. Um, and so our teacher was like, you got to stay in class. We're not letting you out. Whatever. So I, um, after class let out, I learned what was happening and I called Remy because we were dating back then. Actually, we might've been engaged. I don't know. No, we weren't. And, um, he got out of work. We went to his house and we just watched the news and I still didn't really understand what was going on. I had no, <sighs> she's Maggie's fake crying. Um, I just had no I, I was so naive. I did not know there was such evil in this world. And that was that I remember thinking, oh my gosh, how could somebody, she is fake crying. If you can hear her, I'm not being a bad mom. She's fake crying. Um, anyway, I just really remember, I don't know, like my eyes being open to the evil of this world. And so this morning I told my kids, you know, happy Patriots day or whatever, and reminded them of how important it was and how awful it it was that day and um they they're looking at me like i'm crazy because to them it's like you know eons ago but yeah i will not forget that day okay oh how about some lips really quick good morning mary Kay. i'm gonna quickly put on i'm gonna put on some hottie lip plump. no i'm not i'm gonna put on our lip bonbons it's getting to be fall winter your lips are gonna dry out this is a like 
very, very lightly colored lip balm. So it's going to moisturize your lips and give you a little bit of color. I have these all over my purse. I have them here because I use them all winter long. Did you hear that? I don't know if my phone uh, cuts out background noises, but my, my rooster is crowing. I love hearing him crow. It's like the best part of having chickens, except for when he crows at like 4 a.m. Um, he crow if somebody makes a noise out in the woods or if a light shines on him. So like when my husband comes home from work, it wakes him up and he starts crowing. Um, it's kind of a, he's, it's kind of annoying, but during the day I love hearing him. Okay. So that's it. Enjoy your day. Um, I will see you later. If you have questions about pre-ordering airbrush foundation, I can color match you for that. The hydrating primer, I can pre-order that for you. Um, if you have questions about eyes or whatever, just send me a message. I'll be happy to answer it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.